Hello and welcome to Eastern Roman History. The great-grandson of Heraclius, the grandson of Heraclius, the nephew of Heraclius, the son of Heraclius Constantine, originally called Heraclius, Constantine, or as he is later known, Constans II, was a competent, if harsh, emperor whose adept statesmanship and energy helped to check the advance of the Muslim Arabs in Anatolia and North Africa. The year 641 was a year of four emperors, the government rapidly passing from Heraclius to Constantine III to Heraclonus and his mother Empress Martina, with the throne finally falling into the lap of the ten-year-old Constans II. A regency probably consisting of the new patriarch Paul II, who replaced the pro-Martinian patriarch Pyrrhus in 642, the general Valentine, Philagrius, the chief finance minister, and Constance's mother Gregoria, as well as other unnamed senators, headed the government until Constance's adulthood in 644. In 642, Alexandria, the capital of Roman Egypt, fell to the Islamic Arabs. This marked the end of Roman Egypt. To finalise this event, in 644, Egyptian grain was sent no longer to Rome or Constantinople, but Mecca. The Alexandrian Patriarch Cyrus independently negotiated for the surrender of Egypt in return for allowing all Byzantine troops and civilians to withdraw from the province. The Alexandrians were furious with Cyrus, but without extra help from Constantinople, there was nothing that could be done. Although resolving in Constance's reign, the fall of Egypt was the result of the turmoil after the succession of Heraclius. The total exhaustion of Roman resources and incompetence in the civil and military governors to coordinate an effective defence. Amr ibn Alas continued through Egypt and conquered Libya in 643. The Romans retook Alexandria in 645 but due to their commander Manuel's inaction, were expelled forever in 646. Valentine married his daughter Fausta to Constans, and went to Anatolia to return the troops he had used to depose Heraclonus and Martina back to the frontiers. Valentine failed to contain the Arabs. Muaria, the Arabian governor of Syria, captured and sacked Caesarea Palestina, and raided into Anatolia, reaching Amori. The Arabs in Azerbaijan raided into Armenia, but were driven back by Prince Fyodor Rushtuni, who Constans rewarded by making him the chief military commander of Armenia. In 644, the Lombards captured Liguria, killing the exarch Isaac, who mounted its defence. That autumn, Valentine rose in rebellion and marched his army to Constantinople. Patriarch Paul refused to crown anyone other than the line of Heraclius. Valentine was then lynched by a mob of Constance's supporters. This action, as Theophanes recalls, put the now 13 years old Constance in command of the army, effectively ended his lacklustre regency. Appointing a new commander of the east, Theodore, not Theodore Rostuni, Constance flew into action, leading the government with the support of a host of advisers. The failure in Egypt in 646 was a severe cost to Constans. His attempt for a major reversal in Roman fortunes came to nothing. Meanwhile, Muir raided into Anatolia, reaching Amorium again in 647, as well as devastating many Cilician towns. The Arabian governor, also started building a fleet to raid by sea. In addition, in 647, Gregory, the Exarch of Africa, proclaimed himself Emperor. The following year, the Arabs invaded Gregory's territory and, at the same time, Muir attacked Cyprus and captured the island of Arwad. Gregory's revolt was crushed by the Arab attack, which destroyed Gregory's army and forced him to flee to beg the Emperor's pardon. Gennadius replaced Gregory. The Arabs imposed a tribute of 330,000 solidi on Gennadius, but did not advance in Carthage. Meanwhile, 
Constans also succeeded in driving out the Arabs from Cyprus. Having pushed back the Arabs from Anatolia, Constans tried to deal with the religious controversy of monothelitism. The West was staunchly Chalcedonian, and the East was a mixture of Chalcedonian, monothelite, and monophysite. Constans issued the Tipe, or the Edict, which simply stated that it was forbidden to discuss the nature of the wills or energies of Christ. In the Lateran Council of 649, Pope Martin I and Maximus the Monk condemned monothelitism and thereby transgressed the edict. Constans ordered the exarch Olympius to arrest the Pope. He refused and proclaimed himself emperor in 650. Olympius's rebellion ended while en route to Sicily. He caught the plague and died. Constans replaced Olympius with Theodore Calliopus, who arrested Pope Martin and Maximus. Theodore sent the dissenting clerics to Constantinople, where they were charged with treason, perhaps a way to convict them and follow the Tipe. Martin was exiled to Cherson in the Crimea where he died. The next pope, Eugenius, closely followed the Tipe. This episode is significant because it was the first estrangement between the Pope in Rome and the Emperor in Constantinople. In 651, Constans II concluded an armistice with Muir, which the Arabs used to focus on Persia. It was this year that was the last to see the existence of the Sasanian Empire. Sebios recounts the demise of the Zoroastrian Empire whose passing concluded Sasanian history. Sebios, History, Chapter 35, pages 157 to 158. In the 20th year of King Yazdegerd, that is Yazdegerd III, of Iran, in the 11th year of Emperor Constans, who was called Constantine after his father, in the 19th year of the Lordship of the Ishmaelites, the Ishmaelite army, which was in the country of Iran, and Juhastan went eastward to the area known as the Pauhor country, which is the land of the Parthians against Yazdekert, king of Iran. Yazdekert fled from them, but was unable to escape because the Arabs caught up with him close to the Kushan's border and destroyed all of his troops. Yazdekert fled to the army of the Tatals, who had come from different areas to help him, then there was the Marat's prince, about whom I spoke earlier. He had gone to the east to their king, rebelled, fortifying himself in one place, requested an oath from the Ishmaelites, and went to the desert to serve the Ishmaelites. Now the Tatal's troops seized Yazkert and killed him. He had reigned for twenty years, and so ended the lordship of the Iranians and the House of Sasan, which had ruled for 642 years. When the king of the Ishmaelites saw the success of these victories, and that he had done away with the kingdom of Iran, became confident, and when three years of the peace provision had passed, the Arab Caliph no longer wanted to continue the peace with the Byzantine Emperor. So he ordered his troops to commence warfare on land and sea, and to do away with this kingdom as well, in the twelfth year of the reign of Constans. In 652, Theodore Rashtuni of Armenia accepted Arab suzerainty. Constans, whose family was Armenian, commanded an army and successfully restored Armenia and Iberia to Roman control. At the same time, Manuel, commander of the army of Thrace and some senators, plotted to kill Constans. The plot was thwarted by Constans, who got the magistros Sambat to betray Manuel and arrest him. Muir also raided Cilicia at that time. Morianos was placed in charge of Armenia by Constans. However, he lost the eastern half of Armenia to Muir's retaliation in 653, but retained the west. In 654, Muir attacked Cyprus, Crete, Rhodes, Kos, and Aradus. Famously, 
Maria destroyed the Colossus of Rhodes. Here are three accounts of this event. Michael the Syrian, Chronicle, chapter 131. On the island of Rhodes saw the bronze statue of man which had been considered one of the seven wonders of the world. He toppled it, not without difficulty, using ropes, and found that it measured 105 or 107 feet in height. He lit a fire under it and melted its attachments, then cut it up. It made 300 loads of bronze. A Jew from Odessa bought it and took it back to his home. Theophanes the Confessor, Chronicle, from AD 284 to 813, Annus Mundi 6145, AD 652 to 53. In this year, Muius took Rhodes and cast down the Colossus of Rhodes, 1,360 years after its erection. It was bought by a Jewish merchant of Odessa, who loaded the bronze and 900 camels. Constantine VII Porphyrogenitos, De Administrando Imperio, Chapter 21. When he, Muia, came to Rhodes, he pulled down the Colossus that stood in it. It was a bronze statue of the sun, gilded from head to foot, 80 cubits in height, and broad in proportion as witness to the inscription written on the base of its feet, running like this. The Rhodian Colossus, eight times ten cubits in height. Lackeys of Lindos made. He took the bronze of it and carried it over into Syria and put it up for sale to anyone who wanted it. And a Hebrew of Edessa bought it and brought it up from the sea laden on 980 camels. As well as this, Muia sacked Ancyra, forced Morianus from Armenia, who retreated to Iberia, and took Trebizond and Theodosiopolis. In late 654 to 655, Muia launched a naval and land invasion, probably targeting Constantinople. The land army attacked Cappadocia, and the fleet advanced along southern Anatolia. Constans led his navy to meet the Arab threat. The Battle of the Masts, off of the coast of Phoenix and Caria, was a decisive Roman defeat. Thousands died. Hundreds of ships were lost, and the Emperor barely escaped with his life, exchanging clothes with a sailor who was slain in the fighting. This was a decisive defeat of the Romans, but it was not followed up. Although Sebios reports that Muia continued to the environs of Constantinople and tried to siege it, however this deus ex machina story of Constantinople being saved by God and the piety of Emperor Constans seems more hagiographic than historic, especially since just after the Battle of the Masts there was a large revolt in Media which threatened Arab control over Persia. He had also suffered heavy casualties from the Battle of the Masts. See Sebios chapter 36 for more. After the Battle of Phoenix, Muia's fleet then returned to Syria. Despite the victory at Phoenix, Muia's land army failed to capture Caesarea in Anatolia and had to withdraw. In 656, after nearly 20 years of unrelenting warfare, the Arabian Jihad ended due to the Caliph Uthman's assassination and the civil war between Muia and Ali. The Arabs ceased to attack the Romans and Constans II was able to recapture most of the territory lost since 644. Constans re-established Roman suzerainty over Armenia in 657. In 658, he launched a campaign against the Slavs in Greece, the first since they appeared in the reign of Phocus. The outcome of this campaign was to weaken the Slavic tribes, or Sclavonia as they are known, to gain plunder and prisoners, which Constans resettled in Anatolia. In 659, Muia offered Constans II a tribute of 1,000 solidi, one horse, and one slave, 
every day for peace. Constans likely used these resources to reform the empire and its army, laying the groundwork for what would eventually evolve into the Fomatic system between 659 and 662. This early theme system is known as the Strategia, named after the Strategos that was given civil and military command of a vast stretch of territory. Muir won the Islamic Caliphate's civil war and moved the capital to Damascus. The Caliph Muir then regained suzerainty over Armenia. Constance II, however, spent the rest of his reign focusing on the West. Constans left his family at Constantinople and placed the future Constantine IV in command of the East while Constans sailed to Tarentum in Italy in 662. This expedition west was likely motivated to check the independence of the Exarch, defeat the Lombards and possibly introduce the Strategia into Italy and Africa, the next two largest provinces in the empire. The stated reason in the sources is that Constans wanted to make Rome his new court. Constans campaigned in 662 against the Lombards with his new thematic armies. He had initial success, but he failed to capture Benevento. Constans managed to get the Lombard Duke of Benevento to submit to him, but the Emperor was forced to withdraw to Naples, ending his campaign. In 663, Constans marched to Rome and met Pope Vitalian. This was the first time a Roman Emperor had entered Rome since its fall to the Ostrogoths in 476. Constans made donations to churches and led his troops in procession to masses held by the Pope. Despite retaking the peninsula in the previous century, Justinian the Great nor any of his successors ever bothered to visit the ancient capital. Constans II was no exception in his indifference to Rome, for during his 12-day visit, his officials carried off bronze ornaments and statues as well as roof fittings on the Pantheon. Having infuriated both the Romans and Constantinopolitans, Constans retired with his army to Syracuse in Sicily, which became the new imperial court for the rest of Constans's reign. Treadgold comments on his Lombard campaign. Warren Treadgold, The History of the Byzantine State and Society, page 319. This campaign was too rapid to accomplish much, but by showing the flag, it deterred the Lombards from attacking and the Italians from rebelling for some time in the future. Heron agrees with this assessment. Judith Heron, The Formation of Christendom, pages 264 to 265. Although the Emperor did not remove the Lombards from southern Italy, or the Arabs from Africa, the stay in the West resulted in a consolidation of Byzantine control, especially in Sicily. She notes that although Africa had not fallen in 649 with an Arab stronghold in Sueta, Africa, Sicily, Corsica and Sardinia were all at risk. Thus, Constance's settling in Syracuse was not a flight from danger, but actually to place himself where his presence was most needed. In the east, there were renewed raids by the Arabs, but these were effectively dealt with by the new thematic armies. In Sicily, Constance confiscated church plate, and new poll taxes as well as land and naval taxes were introduced in Sicily, Calabria, Sardinia, Africa, and church land owned in the Pope's diocese. He secured the loyalty of the armies in Italy and Africa, possibly by issuing these soldiers with land, as he had done similarly with the Strategia in Anatolia. These taxes caused the Exarch of Africa, Gennadius, the successor to the pretender Gregory, to rebel. Gennadius fled to Damascus and encouraged Muir to send an army west, but he died along the way back in 665. The Arab army, however, continued on. Constans reinforced Africa to meet the coming Arabian invaders. 
Nikephoros, the general in charge of the African troops, was defeated by Muia and withdrew. The Arabs then plundered the province, annexed Tripoli, and took what contemporaries believe to be 80 to 100,000 prisoners, bringing them back as slaves. However, Constans reasserted control over Africa and reorganized the province to his new military model. From 665 to 668, raids on Anatolia increased, and the emperor's absence prompted the strategos Suborius to proclaim himself emperor in 668 and ask the caliph for support. The co-emperor Constantine, the future emperor, attempted to prevent Muia from allying with Suborius, but failed. Suborius marched his troops to Hadrianopolis in northern Anatolia, while Constantine and the general Nikephoros the Patrician prepared the army in defence. Suborius died when he was thrown from his horse during a military drill which ended the revolt. That summer, the now hated Constans II was assassinated by one of his servants during a bath, proclaiming Mizizius emperor. However, Mizizius's bid for the throne quickly fell apart when the strategos of the Carabician troops deserted Mizizius for Constantine IV. The exarchers of Africa and Italy attacked Mizizius and quickly captured him while Constantine travelled west to meet the threat himself. Thus, though very unpopular, Constance's popularity with the army and the effectiveness of his new military system ensured the stable succession of his young son, Constantine IV. By the time of Constance's death, at 37, he had, despite enormous casualties and sacrifices, managed to check what seemed to be an unstoppable force. He succeeded where the elderly Heraclius and King of Kings Yazdegerd III had failed. He restored imperial authority in Italy and Africa, long neglected by other emperors. Constans checked the power of the Sclavonia in Greece and desperately held on to Western Armenia and Anatolia, which would form the basis of the Roman defense against the Caliphs of Islam for the next four centuries. Theophilus of Edessa is reported to have called Constans a new King David. Though he lost many battles, some such as the Battle of the Masts, quite decisively, Constans rose to the occasion despite his young age, time and time again, and did what he could to make sure the Empire survived. Truly, this was a story of David versus Goliath. I have been your host, Daniel Maynard. I hope to see you next time.